Well, it is full steam ahead for Ontario's pension plan, and while the Wynn government likes to claim this is about helping workers, there's a big debate about that. One thing there's no debate on is the effect this will have on small businesses. To talk about that, I want to bring in my friend Dave Howard. He's an entrepreneur, owns a couple of different small businesses in the Ottawa area, and says this is going to hurt people like him in a big way. Dave, thanks for taking the time to join me. Thanks, Brian. The big concern for the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan, and, and there's issues we can get into in a minute about what the money will actually be used for, how it will be quote unquote invested. But for employers like yourself, this is going to be a big cost. And you're a small business owner in terms of, I mean, you don't have a lot of employees, but small business also could mean 100 employees. You get into that scale of a little bit of extra money that you have to pay out for each of them, it adds up to a lot of money, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as a small business owner, I'm very concerned. And, you know, I have uh, several other friends that, that own small businesses, and I've never seen such an outcry of uh, people concerned about uh, something that is, is about to take effect and how uh, detrimental it's going to be to uh, to a lot of small businesses. You know, uh, our economy is currently suffering from low economic growth, uh, tough times uh, businesses are having right now. Uh, small businesses are the economic engine of Ontario. And, you know, we're already suffering from higher taxes, higher operating costs, uh, hydro costs to the roof. And, uh, you know, a soon added carbon talk, t- tax, it's going to be a recipe for disaster for our economy for Ontario. In terms of uh, cost towards employers, I, I, I think that, well, most people just do well, the boss is rich, so it doesn't matter. We'll just heap costs on them. What does it mean for payroll? It, I know one of your businesses, it's, uh, I believe it's primarily you and your wife that run it. So right. even there, there's cost because you're set up as employees of that business. But there's cost for your other employees elsewhere as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So how it works is because we are a small business, we are the employer and the employee. So uh, right now, what they're looking at doing is 1.9% we would contribute for the employee, and then uh, the employee would then uh, uh, contribute 1.9% off their paycheck. So, you know, me and my wife, for example, we're, you know, it's very common uh, in small business to have the the man and wife running the company. And, um, you know, both of us are the employee and the employer. So it's 1.9% each. So it's basically 3.8% each off of our paychecks, which is a lot. That, well, a- any of us would feel almost 4%. Maybe it, it wouldn't be hugely detrimental, but you're going to feel that. If you don't notice a 4% haircut, then, wow, you do have oodles of money. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the you know I, I uh, had sent you a chart on, uh, you know, post recently. All the newspapers are coming up against uh, the, 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 uh, this new tax. And, you know, what people don't understand is not only do we, you know, adding this new ORP, but we already are doing this with the Canada Pension Plan. So Canada Pension Plan, same sort of thing, where we match uh, our own contributions. So, you know, between, uh, you know, for me and my wife, I was doing the numbers and outlaid on the chart that, that, that uh, the National Post had uh, supplied to me <clears throat> with this new tax combined, me and my wife uh, would be paying $16,270 wow. in a public pension plan. But, you know, And then after that, we're supposed to find money for tax savings accounts, for RSPs, you know, money that we actually want to have contribute to our pension plan down the road or to our retirement down the road. It's just, a, it's just an awful lot of money, and it's something that we can't afford, something business can't afford. Well, let's talk about what what it will do for employees, though, because a lot of employees might say, well, look, that's your problem. I don't care. But the reality is it's not going to be a huge boon for employees either. First off, you're not going to see the money for a very long time. You could do better off by investing it yourself. But secondly, overall replacement income from this is going to benefit people at the low end very well. But if you're in the mid range, if you're making seventy thousand dollars, not an unheard of salary in somewhere like Ottawa uh, or many of the big cities across Canada, you're not going to get a, that big a bump. You're going to get a 30 between Canada Pension Plan and the Ontario, Ontario Retirement Pension Plan. The estimate is you'll have a 34% income replacement. 
that's that's below what a lot of people are looking for. Yeah, exactly. And then there's some there's some confusion too with the old age security clawback as well. That you know you're going to be getting a little bit of money, but then there, it's going to be clawed back in your old age security. So I don't really know exactly what the numbers are, but you know, really what what I'm hearing from from my friends and small business right across the country that I have uh, friends and that run small businesses is that they want to be left alone. We just want to run our own, um, you know, uh, retirement plan and, 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 you know, something that we can uh, work towards, build on, and then have one day for ourselves. If, well, then if we, when we do pass on, we will leave something for our kids, whereas these new pension plans, they're just gone right away. I mean, we don't well, not we leave to our, 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 our kids or spouses. You, you and I have talked about this, and, and I've talked about it uh, in past broadcasts. My father passed away at 67 years of age. He did not have that long in the government pension plans. And anything that was in the government pension plan, well, that disappears. That's taken over by the government. It's not passed on to exactly. next generations. It's not him deciding, oh, well, I'd like uh, my wife to get this or my kids to get that. No, it's just the government decides if there's any money to be passed out and how much. And I think that most Canadians could do better. Do you think with all the different uh, savings tools that are out there, the pooled pension plans, the uh, any of us, I only found this out a year ago or so, any of us, could, if we want a government pension plan, can join the Saskatchewan pension plan, but we've got the pooled plans, we've got government plans, we've got RRSPs, tax-free savings accounts. If you want to save, the vehicles are there, correct? Absolutely, they are there and they have been there. And, you know, what I'm reading often now is that the government is overhyping the fact that that uh, Ontarians in particular need help. And, you know, what I'm finding out is they don't need help. There are there are a certain amount of people that will need help. But, I mean, there's ways of addressing that, you know, maybe uh, for different uh, income groups increasing the old age security somehow. But to throw everybody into the same boat and, and, and you know, add this tax right at a time when the, the economy is is failing, you know, you know, we have a carbon tax coming up. I mean, you know, the income taxes are, are rising. You know, we just got a new income tax raise on, on people making $200,000 a year. We want to attract businesses in Ontario. You know, having high uh, electricity costs, higher taxes, you know, carbon tax, I don't see how that is going to attract businesses. We want to attract businesses. That's going to detract businesses. This new tax is all it's going to do is make people look at their bottom line and start shaving jobs, not increase jobs. Uh, Dave, I want to ask you about this. Uh, I know Andrew Coyne noted this in a column this week. He pointed out something that myself, uh, Lori Goldstein, and others have been warning about for a long time. Uh, I'll read directly from the column. Let me just pull that up. Pointing to an actual line item in the budget, he said that the reason for the plan is a line in the budget that says, New pools of capital would be available for Ontario-based projects such as building roads, bridges, and new transit. That tells me that this isn't really about helping retirees. It's about funding government programs. Uh, one of Kathleen Wynne's, um, what's the euphemism she uses, uh, revenue tools. Yes. How do you feel about you know, that? This, this is what actually concerns me the most, Brian, is that, you know, I, I was aware of that, and then I, I, re, I reread that in the Andrew Coyne's uh, column, and that scares the life out of me because, you know, there's there's a way of, of raising money for people's retirement, but then when I hear that somehow they are going to put their hands on it themselves and use this money for, you know, infrastructure, uh, transit, uh, road bridges, I have no idea how investing in a road or bridge is going to pay dividends down the road to pay me my my. Uh, <laughs> It, it, it just this doesn't wash with me it scares the life of it. look we all agree roads and bridges need built but you're right they don't give you uh an eight percent annualized return on investment <laughs> with uh, the magic of compound interest do they that's for sure they don't all right dave howard thanks for joining us with a small business perspective today uh dave howard entrepreneur in the ottawa area owns a couple of small businesses if you've got thoughts on this drop me a line by email brian at the rebel dot media or you can always comment on Facebook, facebook.com slash Brian Lilly.